today's episode, we are going to install the ROS wrappers for the RealSense depth cameras from Intel. Let's get started. Before installing the ROS wrapper for the RealSense cameras, you must install Live RealSense and ROS, of course. I will leave links in the description below on how to do that on the NVIDIA Jetson TX development kits. Let's install the RealSense wrapper. This script basically will go and install the Intel ROS RealSense package. On the Jetson Hacks account on GitHub, there is a repository named install RealSense to ROS TX. I love these names. Let's clone that repository. and switch over to that repository's directory. There are two scripts. One is called install RealSense ROS and the other is called setup TX. Let's run the install script. We can pass the Catkin workspace name that we're going to use in case we have a custom one. Otherwise, it defaults to catkin underscore ws. That happens to be the name of the catkin workspace that we're using. So we'll just not pass any parameters. Installation complete. Let's switch over to the RealSense library here. Take a look at some of the instructions. This looks like an interesting example. RSRGBD launch. Let's open up another terminal. Clean things up a bit. Let's switch over to our Catkin workspace. We'll source the devil. Let's install our RGBD launcher. If we want to use the RGBD point cloud, we need to install another package. And let's launch our camera. Open up another terminal. We can run our configurator. And let's run our viz. Let's set our frame to be our camera. We'll add the topic, registered points, point cloud. Okay. So there I am. Let's add another one in here. Oh, where's the fire extinguisher? Trouble. Hold on a second. Ah. Now we feel safe. Let's see. So when we take a look at this, we can see that there are a couple issues. 
but it's quite a contrast to the RealSense point clouds that we were getting from their demos. We can actually see that it is performant. Let's open up a system monitor. This kind of gives us, gives us an idea of how the CPUs are being used. We can see that in contrast to the way that the live RealSense demos were working, this is quite performant. We can move the point cloud around. You can see that we have some alignment issues. My face is kind of around the shadow. And we can see that the shadow that my body cast is pretty large. It's kind of disconcerting. A little further away. Yeah, that's a little bit better, but it, you wouldn't expect it to be that large. I'm about five feet away from the camera. Here's the shark. You can see the shadows that they cast are pretty large and you can see the alignment error is pretty big also. You can see back here in the, it's hard to point out, yeah, with the cursor. This is kind of the cutout of where they're getting the pixels from. You can see that the shadow from the shark is pretty large. In part, that's because there's such a discrepancy between the field of view of the infrared cameras versus what the actual RGB camera is. So let's take a look at the image from a infrared camera. So you can see that the field of view of the RGB camera is quite a bit different from the infrared camera. The depth map comes from the two infrared cameras, which are both large, and then it tries to map the RGB over that. So you expect some type of misalignment, but certainly not this big of an error. Let's take a look at some of the parameters that you can change around on the camera itself. You can see a list of them. One of the interesting parts is that there's a infrared laser that's in the camera. So you can turn that on or off or put it under auto control. So if we turn it off, you can see the depth map here gets a little bit fuzzier. And when we turn it on, we get slightly better. It's not very bright in here. It's late afternoon. We can also turn off the auto exposure on the color camera. It doesn't really tell you what the exposure is or what the parameters are after it changes and goes into auto mode. I have to write some code to figure it out, I guess. So you can see that you get a decent depth cloud out of it. Uh, the point cloud needs a little bit of work. But that's not surprising considering this is a new camera. Anyway, if you like this episode, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. Thanks for watching.